Mark, it was so nice and pretty and <laughs> yes, well, not and so much. And not so, so much. No. It's so fleeting. Tomorrow, blowing dust. What? See, now it, it's just a little disappointing that we now have storms that are all wind and blowing yeah, dust. It's, ugh. That's very exciting. I right, will start with this, though, you guys. I need you guys to break this down. Have you seen this guy? No. Not, yeah. Whoa. The whoa. levitating guy. This is, I believe, Lisbon. Okay. Okay. What is going on and how uh, is this possible? That's fantastic. Yeah, isn't that amazing? That is pretty amazing. Yeah. Now, here's the deal. I, uh, I went on the interweb and did a little research. Okay. Yeah. So okay. it turns out here's the deal. This is obviously a post that runs into the ground, okay? Yeah. His okay. arm is not real. The arm is part of the post. So uh. then as the arm is fake as well, it comes down into a seat which he's sitting on behind him. So that arm is not real. He's just sitting there and then he's leaning up on a support that's allowing him to do this. Uh. Amazing. It's a great it illusion. Amazing. I love it. It's a great illusion. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's a tremendous illusion. Uh -huh. I but yeah, it. the key here and the point in all this is the arm isn't real either. But you can't tell that. No, not at all. Look at this. <laughs> oh yeah. And he's just sitting right now with a little. And so actually, he's not standing. He's actually sitting. That's so, pretty cool. Yeah, amazing. I still don't totally get it. I'm explaining this, and I still don't understand. Yeah, how it's it possible. is. Yeah, I don't know. Just go with me on this. All right, because I, I don't think he's really levitating. I don't no. think so. Yeah, it's got to be fake. <laughs> All right, up into the northeast through the metro area and down across the southwest, we have a wind advisory for tomorrow for wind gusts up to 55 miles an hour. And not surprisingly, we have red flag warnings as well. We're at that time of year, especially in the lowlands where we are dry. We have a tremendous amount of wind and not much in the way of precip on the way with this next storm. So we do have a lot of fire danger out there. We have a couple sprinkles going though across southwestern Colorado. But other than that, it's pretty quiet. Core of the storm is still well back to our west that will come through tomorrow and into Thursday. Thursday, 71 degrees in the metro. Winds still up a bit. South southwest at 12 miles an hour. We'll talk about those winds and what's going on with them here in just a moment. 50s and 60s for the north. Some 70s out to the east and down to the south. We're still warm in Carlsbad at 81 degrees there and 74 out in Deming. You can see it pretty clearly around the Las Vegas area. We are spinning a good looking storm here. The problem is, as it heads in our direction, it's not going to have a whole lot of juice left, but what it will have left out in front of it is a lot of wind. And the jet stream is going to roll up over the state tonight and throughout the day tomorrow, and that's what's going to drive our winds here. So it's not going to be a situation where the surface cold front, which is coming through as well, is going to be the big wind problem here. It's the upper levels of the atmosphere where the winds will be racing tonight, and during the overnight hours, those winds will start to mix down to the surface. So usually you would expect the winds to completely die overnight. That won't necessarily happen. They'll come down to the surface during the overnight hours, and during the day tomorrow, winds will rip across the area, and this is a look at the wind gusts, and they are big time all across the state here broadly looking at 40 to 55 mile an hour winds in your area of the state so it's going to be tough to escape any of these big time winds across the area here and realize that that's the main impact of this storm. But as the storm itself comes in, it will hold enough juice together to hit a couple portions of our viewing area with some showers. Now, most of the action is going to head up into Colorado, but southwestern Colorado, northwestern New Mexico, and our northern mountains will have the best chance to get some showers going from this late tomorrow and into Thursday as well as this thing crosses just to our north. Meanwhile, down here in the metro across the Gila, yeah, we could see a sprinkle or two, but boy, if we get anything, I'd be thrilled with that. I think more than anything else, this thing's going to be a wind maker, and obviously it's going to be a temperature dropper as well for Thursday before the temp rebound happens on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 50s across southern Colorado next couple of days. Pretty good chance at at least scattered showers. Shot at showers tomorrow as well across the northwest, and the winds will remain a factor. Meanwhile, over to the southwest, you guys probably a little too far south to see much in the way of precip from this, but you will get the wind. Watch I-10 for some blowing dust. Meanwhile, across the southeast, temperatures here mainly in the 80s and 90s, Roswell and Carlsbad, cooler, Cloudcroft, Rudoso with a ton of wind. Rudoso Airport could see winds well over 50 miles an hour tomorrow. 72 Springer, 63 and more, a lot of wind. Northern Mountains got a chance at an isolated shower tomorrow. It wouldn't be a total shock as the cold front comes in late on Wednesday and into Thursday morning to get some resort snow showers. 66 Sandia Park, 68 in Edgewood, 65 Mountain Air, blowing dust, and we get the blowing dust here too, with wind gusts up to 50 miles an hour in the heights. Comfortable though, 72, same deal, Real Rancho, 70 in the foothills, extended forecast. We dip to 67 on Thursday, well below average, and then up we go for the weekend with things getting breezy once again over the weekend, so high fire danger will be a concern again. Much more on Twitter at KRQE Mark. All right, thank, thank you, Mark. You Mark.